Hey guys, it's Max. Today, we are gonna be doing a RAM multitasking showdown comparing a brand new 11th gen Intel Windows PC with eight gigs of standard RAM that we've been using for years against Apple's MacBook Air that does cost $200 less also has eight gigs of RAM, but it is unified memory. A lot of people have talked really good things about this unified memory. And today we're gonna see how does it compare in the real world? Let's go ahead and get started by opening up our activity monitor and comparing RAM usage just sitting here at our desktop. It looks like the M1 Mac is using 5.3 gigabytes of RAM and we have some cache files, but nothing is yet in swap, meaning nothing is written to the SSD. Let me go ahead and open up the LG over here, the LG Gram, and it looks like we're only using 3.7 gigabytes on the LG, so we're using actually less with Windows so far, and both of these have the same applications open. Now let's go ahead and open up Google Chrome. I'm gonna be using Chrome on both of these systems, that way we keep it fair, and let's go ahead and open, say, maybe five different websites, just so we get that kind of a standard baseline usage. Let's go ahead and open up a YouTube video. How about this positive jazz, just for some background music? Let's open up maybe a stock chart that might auto-update in the background. And then let's do Google Drive. This typically takes up a fair bit of RAM since I have so much stuff in my Google Drive. And let's just go ahead and scan all the way down so you guys can screen grab what I have saved in here. <laughs> and let's see how fluid this is. So, so far with five tabs open and not much else, the experience is very similar. And then let's quickly just flick through some of these tabs. No issues whatsoever and I suspect on our Mac, same thing, super fluid. Now, we should know by now that the M1 MacBook Air is faster than this 11th gen Intel laptop, but what we're looking at is responsiveness and more like any slowdowns when you have programs opened up to see how RAM compares. So the performance in between the two shouldn't make a difference in this test specifically. And let's take a quick peek at our activity monitor to see if RAM has changed. Looks like it went up just by a little bit on the M1 Mac, still no swap. And here, it looks like it went up to 4.8 gigs, so about a gig higher than we had before. And now let's go ahead and open up Lightroom Classic. Now keep in mind the Lightroom Classic is still using Rosetta, it hasn't optimized, but the performance is still good as you guys see. With only five tabs open, everything is super smooth with these raw 42 megapixel images. I suspect the Intel system is also gonna be super smooth, zooming in there, no issues. Let's go ahead and flip through a few of these photos. Each one has a ton of effects that have to be done as I flip through. So the performance is pretty good, very little delay there. Same thing on our M1 Mac. Now brushes could really hit a system hard. Uh, it uses both CPU and graphics. And as you see on the M1, we get a slight delay there at the start, very small glitch, and then it's perfectly smooth, at least for now. And let's test out the Intel system. Very smooth, looks like it might be actually a little bit smoother at the start there. Nope. Also a tiny bit of delay and then it smooths out. And now we're gonna get a baseline reading as far as exporting 50 of these images. And I think this is gonna get re hit really hard once we start opening up a few more programs and a lot more tabs. Let's check our RAM usage with this similar intense task. Looks like we have six and a half gigs used of physical memory compared to 6.2, very similar. Uh, but we have over four gigs of swap used on the M1 Mac. Now on the LG, it's tougher to tell exactly how much is being used, but our committed memory is at 16.2 gigs, so it's given us about eight gigs of SSD space, and the SSD on this LG is actually faster than the MacBook Air. Now if we open up our performance monitor, we'll see that we're using about maybe 30% of the SSD's capacity that we can use for RAM. And we are done here. Our M1 Mac took two minutes and 41 seconds compared to four minutes and 17 seconds. But let's go ahead and see what happens when we open up some more web browsing tabs and maybe another program. Bam, that is the 15th tab right over there. And let's just scroll down. All right, web browsing performance is still pretty smooth. All right, all the, on the LG, also not bad. And let's go ahead and open up our Google Drive. I'll open it up at the same time. Whoa, looks like we just had to reload that on the LG, whereas it opened up instantly on our MacBook Pro. How about 
our GME stock, same thing. All right, let's go ahead and try our YouTube video that we had opened up. It's still playing on both. We still have some calm jazz music. And how about IGN over here? Looks like it had to reload on the LG. And let's go back to my Google Drive and let's try to do a little bit of scrolling there. See if one is slowing down. I know Google Drive can really slow down. All right, so once it's loaded, both are actually handling this pretty well. But of course we have to reload everything on the LG. So it looks like Windows is playing a little bit unfairly by shutting down those web tabs and causing you to completely reload it in order to save on RAM, where the Mac, it's quick and it's still there. Now taking a look at our usage here, both about six and a half gigs, but the committed uh, SSD has actually shot up on our LG. And here we have six gigs of swap. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and open up um, our Lightroom, which we haven't touched since we've opened up all those tabs. So let's click at the same time. And that was fast, instant on both of them. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this. Very similar, maybe a tiny bit of lag on the LG. And let's flip through our photos. Looks like the LG's, eh, probably about the same. So no problems yet. Now, what if you need an additional professional application? I'm gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop here. And now I'm gonna open up just five of these raw images without any effects on both systems. And let's see what kind of performance we get with these images opened up. So no issues. Let's go ahead and jump to the first image. Looks like the M1's faster. Let's hop back into Google Chrome. And we are looking like we got stuck there. Let me switch over to IGN. Bam, it was instant there. So it looks like it actually might be because we're reading from the SSD, because I didn't see anything reload. It just took a while just to show up. So let's go ahead and flip back to our Google Drive here. Once again, you guys saw how the M1 is instant there. This took a while. How about we go to my Gmail? Same thing, how about I, the Verge here? All right, that was fast on both. So it looks like maybe the LG decided to bring back those tabs and get it ready if it knows that I'm uh, actively web browsing. And let's test out our scrolling performance. We have nothing really going on in the background, we just have those apps open. So far, it looks like the M1 has everything loaded up, whereas we're loading stuff on the LG and we got to the top here, whereas with the LG, once we're getting to the top, it has to reload it. And now let's go down and see how it is opening up our Lightroom Classic, which we haven't touched in a while. Not bad. And let me scroll down my Google Drive. Wow, okay. I can't believe it. Even with eight gigs of RAM, this is still perfectly smooth. And on the LG, Still looking great. Both of these are doing way better than I expected. 6.6 .6 gigs used out of, <laughs> out of 7.7, .7, but we have a massive 27 gigs committed. A ton is being written to the SSD. And on our Mac, 11.8 gigs of swap written to the SSD. But you guys see how responsive that is, even working off of the SSD. This just makes you think, is it even worth spending extra money on 16 gigs. Uh, Vadim did a video on SSD life yesterday and on swap and off if that matters, if you should be worrying about your SSD life, you guys should definitely check that out. I'll link that after this video. And now it's time for the moment of truth. How do they perform when we actually give them some work to do instead of just simply opening up tabs and programs that should be in the background. So we're gonna export these 50 images again. I'm gonna hit start and I'm just very curious on how these are gonna stack up. Oh no, Lightroom, <laughs> it's, is it crashing? Did you guys see that? It hasn't even started exporting yet. Our Mac is off. It's been about a minute, it's definitely behind where it was previously. And we have a little bit under 10 gigs of swap being used. Okay, it is exporting, but it is just being weird. No, all right, it's going. I'm not gonna touch this at all. It is just not being happy. Looks like task manager had to reload there, but we're up to 28 gigs committed, 24 out of 28 there, seven gigs used. So very similar numbers here. Now, as we're exporting, you guys see everything is kind of slowing down. Let me open up my Chrome, very slow. Of course, we are using a lot of CPU power as well. And let's just quickly switch through these tabs and bam, right there you guys could see 
we are having to pull these from our SSD. Definitely slowing down now, but we are exporting using a CPU and the graphics. And let's test out our LG. Also very slow, definitely slower than the Mac. And that's interesting because the SSD in this system is actually probably about 20%, 30% faster. So we have our times and the M1 Mac took eight minutes and five seconds compared to 13 minutes and 15 seconds for the LG. Now that is of course a big difference in performance, but if we look back at our original testing, that's about three times longer than the original for both systems, a little bit longer on the LG there. So uh, it looks like the performance penalty for having our systems filled up with all those tabs is pretty much the same. Let's open up Premiere Pro and let's see if that finally can break this LG uh, compared to the Mac or if they're still gonna perform the same. Well, the Mac loaded this program up basically twice as fast. We're still loading up here. So maybe even it's gonna get to three times as fast. We see uh, we're having some issues. All right, there you go. Now it's loaded up. And uh, I don't think that this LG can play back up full res, but it could do that half. So let's set both to half and let's hit play. And our M1 is playing this back perfectly, whereas the LG is playing it back at about 10 frames per second, 10, 11 out of, I believe this is this project's 24. So we're getting a bunch of drop frames and this project previously played back perfectly when we didn't have the RAM all filled up. So that is already telling us something. Now let me open up a different one. Oh man, we're glitching up here. Come on. <laughs> I have the beta version of Premiere Pro, which is actually fairly buggy on the M1 and the full release on this LG here. Come on, stop. All right, let's switch this back to half performance. So let's see how that plays. This project is 30 frames per second here. We're playing back at one. <laughs> we have another background project open in the background. So there's two projects open right now. Let's make this even tougher on the M1 MacBook Air. We're at full resolution 4K here, not half resolution. All right, let's see what's happening. All right, two frames per second. Keep in mind, this has uh, double the resolution right now. All right, so I didn't play it back perfectly. Maybe I should have expected that. Let's pause it and switch over to half. It's playing back nice and smoothly. We're bouncing right at 30 frames per second there, both at half resolution and the LG. All right, it's not doing anywhere near as good. And it did once again play this back perfectly when the RAM wasn't full, filled up uh, in our previous comparison. So basically the performance hit is about half with the RAM filled up. Um, where here we have still have enough power. Now, of course, as we were doing all of this, I'm sure some of that uh, background RAM was written to the SSD. Wow, we have 15 gigs of swap right now on the M1. Unfortunately, um, here we don't know exactly how much, but we have 30 gigs committed. That is crazy. And now let the pain begin. We are gonna try exporting this project. I'm gonna hit Q at the same time. Let's see which one opens up quicker here. Um, I don't know, maybe they're both quite slow, <laughs> definitely slower than before. Oh no, the Windows is freezing up on us. All right, bam, looks like the M1 opened quicker. And that's interesting because previously um, the LG opened up faster. And let's hit start. Now previously the M1 was a lot faster. We already know that, but we wanna see the difference in performance with RAM filled up. All right, wow, okay, this is crazy. I did not expect this to be happening. It looks like our M1 is almost as fast as it was without anything loaded up, whereas the LG, instead of 30 minutes, it's gonna take about an hour and five, an hour and seven minutes. All right, guys, I did not wanna wait that long for uh, the LG to finish up. So uh, let's go ahead and do one final test. We have a bunch of stuff loaded up. Premiere, Lightroom, Photoshop. Let's go ahead and open up our Chrome here. All right, so I'm on Google Drive there. Let me switch over to Google Drive here. And let's see after all of that, actually I'm very curious how much swap is used here on Activity Monitor. 17.9 gigs, almost 18 gigs is used up of swap. That is absolutely insane. So let's go ahead and switch through some of these tabs. So our video is still playing. 
That looks like it. Uh, maybe completely reset. Another reset there. Emails resetting. Okay, that actually completely reloaded. I wasn't just pulling from the SSD. So it looks like Windows and LG completely got rid of all of these pages. Yeah, I'm seeing the little loading icons right there. So they were not able to keep it over. That just pushed it too far where now you have every single page is reloading because we had all of those programs open. Once we started exporting, it just, it killed it. But it's still impressive that the system didn't crash. Let's take a look on our MacBook. Okay, that's playing. Look at that, look how fast. Let me go even faster than this. Okay, a little slower in that tab. Wow, okay, no reloading. I think one tab was slower, everything else. Excellent. And then of course we can, let's try going back to Lightroom. Took a little bit longer than last time. That right there opened up quickly. So what is the verdict? Well, first off, the LG with eight gigs of RAM running Windows actually performed better than I expected. Um, you know, at the start, when we started loading up different tabs, yeah, it was a little bit slower with 15 tabs open in Lightroom than the M1 MacBook Air, which stayed perfectly consistent, having five tabs open with nothing else and having 15 with Lightroom, uh, but the difference wasn't that big. Now, as we added on more and more programs, when the task got tougher, uh, we did starting to we started to get a bigger gap between the two, ending up in Premiere Pro, where the M1 MacBook Air it still stayed almost as good as having nothing else opened, and the export was almost as fast compared to LG, where it really slowed down. And then of course afterwards those tabs they were just trashed at that point, where the M1 still was able to open up quickly once we were done with the export. So uh, overall, yes, we have a difference. It's not as big as I expected, and what, one thing I want to note uh, when I compare the MacBook Pro with 16 gigs uh, of unified memory compared to the Dell XPS with 16 gigs. That was a much shorter test, but we saw a bigger gap where the 16 gig M1 actually stayed basically the same performance, even loaded up with a bunch of stuff like in this video, whereas the Dell with 16 slowed down quite a bit. So it seems like 16 gigs is really the sweet spot and that's probably what I would recommend. Now, if you're somebody that is wanting to buy an M1 or you already did and you're worried about SSD longevity, Vadim did an excellent video right over there. You guys should definitely check it out. And if you're interested in this LG, we have a review on it right over there. And it is a very nice machine with some really good unique features. You can also click up there to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching this Max and I'll see you in the next video.